Hello, I'm Mercedes Stevenson, and this is the West Block, politics, perspectives, and players. Business investment in Canada seems to be vanishing, and that could be because of taxes and regulations. One of those areas that investment is down in is food production. Recently, Maple Leaf Foods, the country's largest pork processor, announced it was going to be building a new meatless food processing plant, but in Indiana instead of Canada. That meant for a loss of about 500 jobs and millions more in lost revenue. What do these kinds of losses mean for Canada's food industry? Joining me now from Halifax is Sylvain Charlebois, a professor of food distribution and policy at Dalhousie University. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So one of the things that we're looking at and that you're looking at is this decision by Maple Leaf Foods to build a brand new meatless processing plant south of the border. Uh, it's you know a big Canadian company that we hear a lot about, but they've chosen instead to build it in the U.S. Were you surprised by that decision? Not really, actually. Uh, if you look at um, the metrics, if you look at uh, the business environment in Indiana and in the U.S. for for food processing, uh, really, you can't really blame Maple Leaf. Uh, incentives were quite compelling uh, that were provided by the state of Indiana. And so uh, if, I, if I were running, uh, if I was running uh, Maple Leaf, I would probably have done, uh, made the right decision. You see, over the last decade, the, uh, the United States has seen 4,000 new food processing plants and during that same period in Canada, we saw barely about 20. So you can see that really there are some issues north of the border uh, when it comes to supporting food processing in general. So what are some of those issues? I mean, what would make it so much more appealing to build the plants in the United States instead of Canada? Well, first of all, uh, incentives are clearly there. Governments actually do believe in the value of value add. I mean, that's really where innovation comes from, uh, most of it anyways, and, uh, and that's where growth uh, or economic growth it comes from. Uh, we tend to have forgotten that in Canada, unfortunately. Uh, we've lost over 22,000 jobs in the last five years in food processing. And, and that's not a coincidence, just because there's been no investments. So that's one thing. The other thing is, is skilled labor. Uh, in a modern plant, you do operate with different machinery, with computers, robotics, and, uh, and, and our uh, human capital hasn't really adapted to that reality. Uh, often in, in some plants in Canada, in southern Ontario or elsewhere, uh, you, would, you could walk into a plant and, and really uh, figure out that within a few seconds that the machinery there is very old and it needs investment. So there's no capital investment being happening in Canada just because most of these companies are controlled by, uh, by foreign interests. And so they don't really opt to invest a whole lot in, in Canadian plants. So that's really another problem. So controlling brands is really key here. And Canadian plants just don't control uh, most of these brands. So ideally, more Canadian companies running food processing in Canada would help that? Absolutely. Uh, but to go back to the Maple Leaf example, a Canadian company, they decided to actually go south uh, basically because, well, the environment, uh, the investment environment is there in the U.S. The skill, uh, labor, they need 500 people to occupy that plant. But what's ironic is that the number one ingredient to supply a plant are peas. And Canada is one of the largest uh, producer of peas in the world. So this, what, what's likely to happen is that we're going to be producing peas in Canada. It's all going to be exported into the U.S. In, into that Indiana plant so they can produce different kinds of products that will buy eventually 10 times, 20 times the price. It's going on. This has been going on uh, for forever with mustard grains, for example, come out of Saskatchewan, canola, other types of commodities. Uh, this is not new, but unfortunately, uh, there's, there's, there's no place, there's no processing, uh, processing capacity being built in Canada as a result of these strategies. 
So what more could be done to try to encourage either the foreign companies who are present in Canada to keep their processing plants here or update them or to encourage Canadian companies like Maple Leaf that are using Canadian products not to go to the U.S.? Is the issue here uh, government policies when it comes to taxation regulation that are standing in the way? Uh, is there something more that could be done to encourage that investment? Uh it's, it's not necessarily about regulations or, or fiscal policies, but it's about giving food processing a home in government. Often, food processing is the forgotten child. If they go to agriculture, agriculture will tend to look at farm gate issues. So that wouldn't fit with food processing. But if they go to innovation or labor, Again, they have other issues to deal with in, in, in the auto sector or pharmaceuticals. or uh, So they, do, they don't have a home. And it's quite frustrating for food processing to, uh, to, to get the attention from government. It's very difficult to do uh, regarding any issues that they have to deal with. So that's one thing that needs to change is to recognize a home in government for food processing. Secondly, we need capital investment. We need money. And uh, we need to modernize plants, and we need to encourage companies to invest in building new plants as well in Canada. And thirdly, skill sets, people, human capital. We need to make sure that colleges, universities uh, have the right programs, the proper programs to train people so they can actually go into a modern plant and, and know how to operate uh, the very modern machinery that we often find in modern plants. So what about people who say, who cares where the food is processed as long as it's on the table? Is there a deeper issue here to do with food security in Canada and, and does it matter where that food is processed? Well, so here's the thing. The more you buy as a consumer, the more you buy processed foods that comes from abroad, the more vulnerable you are. Uh, think of the currency, for example. If you buy uh, products that were processed in the U.S., um, if you see the Canadian dollar go down 10 cents, which has happened before uh, in a month, uh, well, then your products are likely going to be more expensive. And, and the more you control food processing, the more you're in control of the entire supply chain. You're in control of, of the innovation agenda, and uh, you're in control also of the kinds of products your population will eat. If you're really focused on health, um, like the Cane Food Guide is suggesting, for example, you can actually kind of honor some of the other policies that we've seen in Canada, like the Cane Food Guide, for example, uh, in, in a more meaningful way. Because right now, basically, uh, all we're doing is, is to grow uh, different produce, uh, cereals, things like that, and it's all being processed elsewhere, and we buy it back at uh, 10 times the price, and all that wealth is created elsewhere, and not here in our own backyard. What's the broader consequence here if we don't find a way to reverse this trend? So if we don't reverse that trend, uh, what is likely to happen is that we'll have a country producing um, hogs, cattle, chicken, eggs, uh, produce, and, and that's about it. And so if we are to put anything in a jar, if we are to, put, if we are to add value to any of these commodities, we have to rely on uh, the knowledge uh, that has been um, harvested, I guess, in other countries. And, so, and they would be the ones feeding the world. Um, America, uh, food processing America has, has become a, a dominant sector, not by accident, it's, it's by supporting a strategy. And, and this is not something we have in Canada. We don't have a food strategy. Uh, the current government has promised Canadians a food strategy. We still don't have one months away from the, from the election. But let's hope that the new government uh, being elected in the fall will give Canadians a clear food strategy so we can actually value processing as much as possible so we can recognize that, well, really, controlling the entire supply chain is, is a priority.